We had a storybook life. David was a doctor, a surgeon. He put Wendy on a horse when she was eight years old. Every year, she won her age group. She had lots of friends. She liked school. Well, <clears throat> sorry to say it, Mrs. Berman, but uh, kids don't usually run away from perfection. When she was 13, we sent her to equestrian camp for the summer. On July 17th, David had a heart attack jogging around the reservoir in Central Park. He was dead before the paramedics arrived. And the following year, Wendy spent with psychiatrists. And the, the promiscuity started, and the drugs. And she ran away, but, but she always came back in a few days. One day, she just didn't come back at all. Last year, I got a letter. She said she was all right, but uh, something terrible would happen if I tried to contact her. If we could see that letter. I I'd like it back, if that's OK. And the fifth angel sounded the trumpet, and I saw a star fall from heaven upon the earth. And there was given to him the key of the bottomless pit. Shrinks did a hell of a job. And what is it? She joined a convent? Get this. Return address 476 Avenue, bearing the initial of our Lord into the new kingdom. Great. This time of day, it's going to take us an hour to get downtown. Since when do you have a road map to heaven? I don't. But I've been up and down Avenue C. See for Christ. through the valley and into we're in search of a peaceable kingdom detective surely that can't be against the law well it is when the path to it runs through a wall street parking garage i read about the explosion i prayed for those who were injured yeah well i'm sure you've got a seat reserved in heaven donald but uh, i'm not too sure about another member of your flock wendy berman our congregation is a lot of members i couldn't possibly know them all well, Miss Berman used your church as her mailing address. The doors to our temple are open to everyone, Detective Briscoe. Well, I got tired of pickup trucks and drive-ins. So you traded them in for subways and street muggings? Well, you stay, don't you? I was born here. And I couldn't be happier living here. <laughs> you ever watch the 11 o'clock news? Mike, I'm going to get a cup of coffee. My kid should be so sweet. Yeah, well, I'm starting to get cavities. Things will change, Detective Logan. There's a lot more good in man than evil. Is that what they preach in that church of yours? You're a skeptic. Ten years and Our Lady of Mercy will do that to you. Sister Teresa at St. Luke's in Boise used to make us have silent lunch every day. We had to wear plaid skirts below the knees. Blue blazers. Got it. <laughs> what about your folks? Do they know you're here? Two years, my stepfather probably doesn't even know I'm gone. Daniel Hendricks is here. He says he's the grand poobah. I formed the Echerusian Temple seven years ago. The people that come to me are in search of something, although most of them don't know what it is. But uh, you do. Well, we're all ultimately in search of the same thing, Detective. What about this girl? How is her search progressing? She was extremely troubled. So you knew her? I found Ruth maybe a year ago. She was on the corner of 12th Street selling her body for a vial of crack. A little prayer, some real food. I thought she was back on the right path. But she zigged when she should have zagged. She disappeared several months ago. You called her Ruth. Her mom called her Wendy. She was trying to forget her past life. Can you blame her? Most of these kids, they're stray kittens. 
All they really need is someone to care about them. Someone to pay a little attention when they cry out. Yeah, or a little jail time. It's amazing that some of them have survived. There's functional families, drugs, abuse. I won't lie to you, we don't always succeed. But more often than not, I think we're able to turn their lives around. There's nothing else. <sighs> Seems sincere. Oh, come on, Lenny. Church, that's not church. Church is stained glass windows and nuns running around with rulers. The gospel according to Logan. That's right. And rule number one is the girl I just talked to should be giving rave reviews to her boyfriend, not some Bible banger. Do so you think Kendricks forced these kids? Well, didn't you have to be dragged to church? Well, Hendricks said the Berman girl fell off the wagon a couple of months ago. Yeah, well, Jim Baker swears on a stack he didn't know where the money was going. Listen, how many crackheads do you know can cook up a bomb in a basement? Somebody must have helped him. See if he'll give you a list of his congregation. And try to be polite. You're kidding. That guy was a preacher? Are you saying he was in here? Yeah, hey, man, it's not. Bro, come quiet, you know what I'm saying? Yes, sir. <laughs> sure is. What's a preacher doing with a honey like that? Any chance he used his credit card? Mm. After seven, it's cash only. Exact change. Dude had a 20, which meant the $4 tip for me. Are you sure that was him? Around here, guy comes in with diplomatic plates. I remember. Being a fanatic's not against the law. His girlfriend had ammonium nitrate under her nails. They bought the diesel fuel together. It doesn't mean he knew what she was going to do. The girl liked to ride horses. What does she know about explosives? Hendrick spent four years blowing up things for the army. Your motive? Who knows, maybe he saw a burning bush. Look, he lied about seeing the girl. We can get the entire congregation from his old church to swear he's a nut job. We're talking arson and felony murder. Pick him up. And I saw another man, and he was up to his knees in the river of fire, and his hands were outstretched and bloody, and words came out of his mouth and from his nostrils. All right, and boys and girls, and church is out. Crying. Daniel Hendricks, you're under arrest for the murder of Wendy Berman. You have and the he right. He said, "Help me from this suffering, for I shall suffer." Tell Mike, tell him about his right to keep his mouth shut. I am all and in all. You have the right to remain silent. Anything you say can be used against you in a court and of law. And he laid his hand understand. upon me, saying unto me, "Fear not, I am the first." Your client lied about his contact with the deceased. He recognized the ramifications of Ms. Berman's actions. Admittedly, it was inappropriate behavior, but... Inappropriate, Louise, is using the wrong fork for salad. I was trying to protect the temple. By purchasing diesel fuel in a stolen car? Ruth told me it was her father's car. Why wouldn't I believe her? Bottom line, the most you can hang on Mr. Hendricks is possession of a stolen auto, and that's assuming you can show knowledge. He not only had knowledge, he had intent. And what? You gonna prove it with a Ouija board? See in court, Ben. Of course you convinced the grand jury, Ben. Your voice is the only one they heard. I presented the facts. They drew the obvious conclusion. Well, all you can prove for sure is that this Berman girl planted the bomb. Unless this Hendricks fellow has a pocket full of miracles, she's still six feet under. Well, someone had to teach her how. Hendricks had the expertise. I know how to scramble eggs doesn't mean I made breakfast. That is not entirely analogous, Heather. To a jury it is. That's why you're going to withdraw the indictment. Unless I can see you connect the dots with something more than number two pencil. Well, I doubt we're going to get anything under the other Atrusians. I read the police transcripts. They're like family. They won't turn on Hendricks. These people have real families, don't they? Mm -hmm.